welcome to my channel. My name is Mari and I am a teacher in Georgia. Welcome. So in this video, I'm basically gonna take you guys along with me as I plan a lesson. I teach ninth grade lit and yeah, I pretty much have the bare bones of what I'm going to teach next week. I just got done talking to a colleague. And so we pretty much wanna stay on the same page as far as like teaching the same grade levels, like what we teach, the text, our you know activities and things of that nature. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. Just to give you um, some news, we did a Socratic seminar for the first time today and it went so, so well. I was worried because Socratic seminars can either go really, really good really, really well, or just kind of like flop, but pretty much all my classes did amazingly well. And the light just went off, hold on. So I'm gonna try to finish this intro before the lights go off again. So like I said, I pretty much know what we're gonna do next week. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I plan, how I organize my ideas, also how I create resources for my students, um, the slides that I present each week, I'm gonna go over that as well. And yeah, so if you're interested, if you are a secondary teacher, please stay tuned. So first things first, we do block schedule. So on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, I have 45 minutes with each of my class periods. It's not a lot of time, but it is good to see them, you know, for those days, each of my classes for three days. Um, so yeah, so since Mondays are super short, the only thing we're gonna do on Monday is read the poem and um, annotate it together. So I feel like it's super important that teachers basically complete whatever their students are expected to complete ahead of time so that as a teacher, you already know what the students might struggle on and you just have a better idea of what you're teaching and how you're gonna be teaching it. So like I said, I've already annotated the poem. It's called, it's called The Debt by Tim Siebels. Um, so Monday, we'll be reading it and annotating it together. I will also do a very, very short mini lesson on figurative language. On Tuesday, I'm going to do a gallery walk. So basically the students will um, be going to different parts of the classroom and I'm going to display a blown up version of each of the stanzas. Um, I'm going to create a graphic organizer for them to complete and the students will analyze that particular stanza on their graphic organizers. And they'll be in groups so they can collaborate and share ideas. Wednesdays and Thursdays are block days. So those are 90 minute class periods. That's a really long time. I can get a lot of stuff done. So with that being said, basically the students are going to compare and contrast inheritance culturally and physically. Um, how are those two ideas similar? How are they different? And that's based on the poem that we're reading. And then last but not least, since this Friday went so well with the Socratic seminar, I think I wanna bring it back next Friday um, by having another Socratic seminar and hopefully since the students will know what to expect and like which questions or which type of questions encourage a better discussion, hopefully next Friday's Socratic seminar will be even better. So that is the bare bones. That is what I'm thinking. As I'm planning, things are bound to change. Um, and honestly, as the week progresses next week, things change all the time. So teachers, you know that you have to be flexible and yeah. Oh, and another thing there's a very good chance I will not finish this entire video or this entire lesson plan right now today. So if you see me at home in my sweatshirt and glasses, just know that I didn't finish the lesson plan in one hour, but I'm gonna try to get as much done as I can. All right, so make sure you stay tuned. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and engage. Okay, so basically everything I just explained to you guys, I wrote it out. So on Monday, we are going to begin by reading the debt and we're gonna annotate the text together and then we'll have a mini lesson on figurative language. On Tuesday, as I was writing, I remembered that we will have a formative, formative number two. So hopefully we do have time for the gallery walk, but if we don't, it's fine because on Wednesday and Thursday, we're gonna have very, very long class periods, 90 minutes. We can maybe bring the gallery walk over here to Wednesday and Thursday and do that maybe the first part of class. And then we can do the compare and contrast where we um, basically look at the ideas of inheritance 
that is cultural and then inheritance that is physical and in co compare and contrast those ideas maybe with a graphic organizer. Also, I'll give them a chance to begin their poems. Basically, I want them to write a poem or create a poem that shares the same theme as the original poem, The Debt or Anchor Text. And then hopefully Friday, we can do a Socratic seminar again. So these are the bare bones. These are the basic plans. Now I have to bring it to life. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so it is currently 4.57. I promised myself I would leave at five o'clock, um, even though I am coming back for the football game, but I have the bare bones of the lesson plan, basically what document, the lesson plan document or template that needs to be turned into admin. I have that. At this point, all I have to do is create the resources, hyperlink them to the lesson plan template or lesson plan, I'm sorry, on Google Docs and I'll be done. Um, I think I got a lot done. Um, what's going to take me a long time is creating the slides for the week and also creating the resources like the graphic organizer and the uh, the key terms that I want to give the students with definitions. So yeah, I'm kind of tired um, and I knew I probably wouldn't finish this in one sitting. So hopefully this video isn't too long, but yeah, I'll probably finish this when I get home. And that's just being real. Um, yeah, a lot of times teachers cannot finish a good, well thought out lesson plan in one sitting. And that's okay, that's okay. Um, so yeah, see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, so it is Saturday. It is about two o'clock, maybe 2.45 I think. And I finished my lesson plans late, late last night. Um, I got a lot done and I'm super pleased with how next week is. This is my fiance. He wanted to say hi. What's up guys? See ya. Love you. Love you. <laughs> so. Like I was saying, I finished my lesson plans late last night. Um, I tweaked a couple of things, like I said in a previous clip, with lesson planning, as we go along the way as teachers, we figure out you know, what will work, what won't work, and we make adjustments even after lesson plans are turned in. Like if we're in the middle of a week and something's just not working or we found a better strategy or activity, um, it's completely normal for us to change things, right? Um, so yeah, I finished my lesson plans. Um, so first things first, um, each week I basically prepare a complete slideshow presentation of what I'm going to show my kids each day. So that was the most time consuming um, part of this lesson plan. Um, and that's pretty much how it is every week. Also, I had to uh, basically create uh, two resources. I completed a, or one resource. I created a graphic organizer for students to use. Um, initially, I thought I wanted the students to analyze each stanza, but I thought about it. And, and you know, on Monday, we're annotating the poem together. So they'll already have analyzed it with me. So on Tuesday, instead of them doing a gallery walk, analyzing each stanza, we are basically going to interpret or paraphrase each stanza. They're gonna put it in their own words. And then at the end, they're going to create a theme statement for the poem. So I thought that was much better, much more fitting for this um, for this uh, lesson this week. So without further ado, I'm gonna give you guys a glimpse into what my slides look like for the week. I'm also gonna show you guys the graphic organizer I created for the poem that the students will use in the gallery walk. So stick around. So each week I create slides for every day of the week. Wednesdays and Thursdays are easy because they're basically the same exact thing because I have um, block days on Wednesday and Thursday. So first things first, um, basically I'll create a welcome slide with happy whatever day of the week day of the week it is and their bell ringer. So for next week, I want them to complete membean for 15 minutes when they first come in. We may not finish the full 15 minutes, but we will attempt to. Um, so yeah, so happy Monday right here. And I'm gonna explain how I created this image right here. Um, after the welcome page with the bell ringer, I'll have the agenda explaining 
um, the flow of the class period. And then I'll just create whatever resources I'm gonna be using for that week or for that day, I'm sorry. So on Monday, this upcoming week, we're gonna be talking about figurative language. Um, these are ninth graders, so I know they understand a lot about figurative language. So this is just gonna be a very brief refresher. And I have created um, a separate slide with just this particular page for them to always reference um, I'm sorry, refer to, and I'm gonna post it in Google Classroom. And so um, right here, it's basically me telling them we're gonna read the poem and annotate it. So I found an image on Google Images. Um, basic, you know, annotation ideas, telling them what they can do to annotate the text. And also I found a picture of a book, an image of a book. So the cool thing about Google Slides is if you press insert image, search from web and you put transparent in front of whatever you're looking for, it will provide you with um, whatever you're looking for in a transparent background. And so that's what I did right here to find this open book. Let's see. So yeah, I found it right here and you just press insert and the book will be there. All right. Um, and so basically that is for that whole class period. I know reading the poem and annotating it will take up some time. And especially because Mondays are a 45 minute class period day. Um, usually I'll have the exit ticket as well, but I'm afraid we may not even get to the exit ticket. So we shall see. So same thing for Tuesday, very similar. Um, I have the bell ringer and um, a timer as well. I like to go onto YouTube and find timers with um, lo-fi music. I think that's how you pronounce it, um, that they can listen to as they're doing their bell ringer. So on Tuesday, we actually have a CFA number two. So um, I have a timer and they're gonna start automatically and I'll update the code once Tuesday gets here. And same thing, I'll provide them with resources uh, explaining what we're gonna do in our gallery walk, um, yeah, so that's basically how I create each slide um, or the slides for each day. I also want to tell you guys how I made this um, image. So it's one picture together. I actually made this through PicMonkey. So if you go through PicMonkey, I'm going to edit a copy I've already made. And you can change the background to whatever you're creating to transparent. And then you can type whatever, you know, whatever you need to type as a title for your slides or worksheets or anything like that. Um, and I just, I really like the fonts that they offer on PicMonkey. I think they're really cool. I prefer using PicMonkey sometimes to add titles to my slides or worksheets or resources. And so basically I'll just create a font, or I'm sorry, choose a font that I like, um, change the color, and then save it, download it as an image, and then when I go to Google Slides and press insert image from my computer, it'll be there and I can just add it to the slide. So these are the slides that I will present throughout the week. Now, I also wanna show you how I created the graphic organizer. So basically I used canva.com and I love Canva. Literally you can create anything. Um, and so I created this worksheet and basically I'm going to, or I'm sorry, graphic organizer, I'm going to download it, share it as a PDF to them, and have them edit it through Kami. That way they can actually type on the PDF and then save it again and basically turn it into Google Classroom, which I think is really cool. So yeah, um, I'm contemplating starting a Teachers Pay Teachers account where I'm actually a seller because I've been looking a lot since I've moved to high school and there aren't a lot of resources for uh, high school ELA. So I think maybe, maybe I might give it a try and see how lucrative it is. But yeah, like I said, you can create uh, anything with Canva. This past week, we actually created infographics for the story Loser and the kids did really, really well with it. Um, I'm super proud of them. So this is one example of what we created together. So yeah. Way to go, Canva. I completely recommend it. Awesome. All right, guys, so that is the end of my video. I know it's kind of lengthy, but when you are creating an awesome lesson plan, 
it takes time. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below. I will see you guys next time. Oh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and engage in my channel. I would really appreciate it. All right, bye guys.